Grouper aquaculture in Taiwan has a history of over 30 years and has overcome many problems. The techniques established here are known throughout the world, especially those related to broodstock and larval nurseries. About a dozen species of grouper are commercially farmed, and seven of these have gone into large-scale production in Taiwan. The grouper is a warm water species found mostly in the tropics and subtropics. It has a big mouth and a stocky body and likes to hide in subsurface caves in the reefs. Chinese people consider the grouper an expensive delicacy. Hong Kong in particular is fond of groupers and it has become the main market for fish from Taiwan. However, the large number of groupers caught has caused wild stocks to decline sharply and reduced market availability. The grouper is gregarious and adaptable and fattens up well on moderate amounts of feed, so it is excellent for aquaculture. From 1971 onward, grouper fry caught on tidal flats were cultured in Penghu. In the following five years, this practice spread to other parts of southern Taiwan. In 1981, the successful artificial propagation of grouper fry had begun to make an impact on the grouper industry. By 1991, artificially propagated grouper fry were being mass produced. Since then, groupers have been one of the most important fish raised in Taiwan. There are many different kinds of groupers, about 400 species worldwide, 117 of which are found in Taiwan. In 1981, Taiwan successfully bred orange spotted groupers and Malabar groupers. In 1991, the brown marbled grouper was bred. In 1996, the giant grouper, largest of the species, was bred. Followed in 2001 by small numbers of potato grouper, a protected species in Australia. In 2004, the colorful leopard coral grouper was first bred. In 2007, the speckled blue grouper, valuable both in economic and aesthetic terms, was bred. And in 2009, the long-tooth grouper, which tolerates much lower temperatures than the other species. Aquaculture techniques are rapidly developing in the grouper industry. Stocking density has gradually been increased and different types of aquaculture have been developed for different geographical conditions. Grouper farming in Taiwan mostly involves pond aquaculture. Since southern Taiwan is very warm, it provides the best environment for groupers. The grouper industry has thus prospered there, with Gaosheng and Pingdong the main areas.
Sea cage aquaculture is used mostly in Penghu because there are suitable bay areas there. This technique uses the sea as a fish pond, reducing damage to water and soil. It has become another distinctive feature of Taiwan grouper aquaculture. The grouper is a hermaphrodite, with the female features maturing earliest. After a few years, the female fish transforms into a male. Thus, mature male stock is difficult to obtain. The bottleneck for mass production of grouper fry is the supply of mature male fish. After many years of research on increasing the production of male groupers, the Fisheries Research Institute began implanting hormones in the fish's body to turn female groupers into males. In the wild, the sex change takes six to eight years, but now it can be made to occur in less than three months. This technique has become the foundation of quantity production of groupers in Taiwan. To obtain good fertilized eggs, the Fisheries Research Institute has developed techniques to induce maturity. Superior broodstock is selected in the spawning season and injected with hormones so that they can lay good eggs. This technique can produce a large number of fertilized eggs conveniently and quickly. After hormone injections, the broodstock is moved into a spawning pond. Fertilized eggs are then collected with a net. The eggs are very sensitive to the water temperature and salinity levels. Therefore, it is necessary to keep tight control of the water quality. Changes in salt content, temperature and acidity can all influence hatching. After a night in aerated water, the pearl-like fertilized eggs in the hatchery pond float up to the surface. Eggs that remain at the bottom are spoiled and are removed. Within an hour, cell division begins. In 10 hours, the nervous system appears. At 17 hours, the eyes and heart. They finally hatch at around the 23rd hour. The larvae are tiny and carry the remains of the yolk in a yolk sac. The larvae change shape as they grow. After 24 hours, the pectoral fins appear. Between the fifth and the seventh day, they begin to grow a long spike on the ventral and dorsal fins, which stretch to beyond their tails. In 14 days, this spike begins to shorten, reaching a minimum length between the 24th and the 30th day. When the larvae begin to display spots and a pattern, they have entered the fry stage. Taiwan grouper aquaculture can be subdivided into broodstock cultivation, the fry nursery, intermediate development, and farmed development. This specification improves aquaculture techniques as well as minimizing risks at each stage. To keep the fry healthy, their food must be tended carefully. 
since it is best to feed them live aquatic organisms. The work done by the Fisheries Research Institute on aquatic food organisms has been vital to the quantity production of fry. The first food for grouper fry is fertilized oyster eggs. After a few days, the fish progress to eating live rotifer and small copepoda. Those rotifer and copepoda are supplemented with tiny algae and probiotics to assist the health and development of the fry. The grouper have entered the fingerling stage when they reach an inch long. They are already being weaned from live food. They are put in clean seawater in sterilized ponds and observed for a few days to check that they are normal. They are fed minced fresh fish and the water quality is monitored. Grouper fry may become cannibalistic. The larger fry will attack the smaller. This means that the food supply has to be kept high enough to discourage the fish from eating each other. In addition, different groups of fry must be separated from each other with mesh screens. This is done twice a week and has proven effective in reducing cannibalism. rapid increase in aquaculture areas and stocking density of groupers has encouraged viral infections. In the 1990s, there were heavy losses from this cause. Subsequently, researchers have addressed the problem and devised many strategies to prevent disease and keep the stock healthy. To obtain uncontaminated broodstock, two processes are employed. Artificial sex change to shorten breeding times and polymerase chain reaction PCR techniques to screen for viruses. Viruses spread easily through pond water and aquatic organisms and so environmental control is very important. In general, disinfection of pond water, facilities, and controlled aquatic organisms is used to block pathogens. The Fisheries Research Institute has also built up specific pathogen-free, SPF, broodstock breeding, and model spawning farms. The purpose is to isolate the cause of grouper illnesses and carry out comprehensive epidemic prevention. Many academic organizations are trying to develop vaccines for grouper viruses. They hope through these studies, coordinated with the Fisheries Research Institute, to reduce the spread of viruses and reinforce the grouper's immune system as a disease control strategy. To ensure food safety, the grouper has been brought into the production and marketing traceability system. This is aimed at monitoring traces of drugs in the habitat levels of heavy metals, and bacteria. With these checks, consumers are guaranteed that the groupers they eat will be safe and healthy. To increase the variety of cultured fish, the Fisheries Research Institute has made major advances in grouper aquaculture one concerns Plectropomus leopardus, especially favored by the Hong Kong market. There is also Epiniphilus bruneus, which can adapt to relatively low temperatures from 5 to 33 degrees Celsius. 
This species removes the temperature limitations that have restricted grouper production to southern Taiwan. Currently, research is focused on mass production. According to statistics, the market value of Taiwan groupers is second only to that of eel. The total output value is about 4 billion NT dollars, including not only domestic consumption, but also export, which was worth 1.4 billion NT dollars in 2009. Hong Kong is the largest market. Live fish boats have been specially built to improve the shipping of groupers which are loaded on board from live fish transport vehicles. The fish are transported at relatively low temperatures to slow their metabolisms. Using live fish boats has increased the survival rate for shipped groupers and has also reduced the overall cost of shipping. Because of the enterprising and creative spirit of Taiwanese grouper breeders, Taiwan has a leading place in world grouper production. To guarantee continued development of the grouper industry, the Fisheries Research Institute will concentrate on broodstock selection, find new techniques of producing SPF broodstock, establish a model farm for mass seed production, and advise grouper farmers how to produce good quality seeds. These measures will make the industry steadily more competitive so that Taiwan becomes the grouper seed research and supply center for the Asia-Pacific area.